Well, what do you think that's going to do to the defensive line not having those two guys in there? Well, those are your two. Those are your two nose tackles. Kinlock can play some nose tackle, and the way the Niners have been doing this scheme, basically both defensive tackles have to come inside at some point. So it seems to me, starter going to be Contavious Street. I don't think he's that much of a drop off, or maybe it'll be Darian Daniels. It'll be those two guys. I think they'll be fine. What do you guys think? I just think. Without Antonio Gibson, probably, I, I think he's out. If not, he's extremely questionable or doubtful for this game. And I think he's the versatile running back in Washington's offense. So if they end up going with Peyton Barber and J.D. McKissick, it, that helps the Niners' defense in terms of personnel because when Peyton Barber's out there, you know it's most likely a run. You can send Darian Daniels out there and stuff that in the middle run, which is what Barber does most of the time. If it's McKissick, that opens it up more. He's Alex Smith's check down guy. You can get a couple more defensive ends, move Eric Armstead inside, get Kentavious Street out there, and then you get more pass rushers on the field. I think that helps the Niners without Gibson. I mean, obviously, Gibson's, not out. Gibson's out. Yeah. So I think that helps just having no pay, or having no Gibson and having a one dimensional running back in Barber and a close to one dimensional receiving running back in JD McKissick. Yeah. yeah so going you- back to the defensive line thing, I think I agree. There's not a huge drop off in any of those guys. They're all pretty similar in terms of quality, but I worry about the rotation. You know, we saw last year, uh, it was really evident when guys got hurt, the defensive line just wasn't playing as well because everybody else had to play more snaps. Mm-hmm. And so that's what worries me there a little bit is the depth and the fact that you're not going to be able to have guys rested and playing their best. They might get a little bit fatigued. Also, it seems like Kentavia Street is like good for one roughing the quarterback penalty a game. Whether or not you think it's legit or not. I mean, uh, he hits the guy and they throw the flag. I don't know. Kentavious, don't uh, – or like, I don't know. Don't hit him or work on your time. I don't know what to tell him. The one against Breeze seemed like a terrible call. Uh, but the one last week was like, mm, dude, that – yeah. That's going <laughs> to – I don't know what to tell you. The one last week he messed up. He deserved the flag. But Josh Allen made it look so worse with his neck snapping back. Absolutely. He was so dramatic about it, which is a good play with Allen for Allen. That's what you're supposed to do. But it made it look way worse than it was. Agree. And if, if Nick Mullins gets his like that, there's no way they're throwing that flag. No. Nah. That's the biggest problem of Nick Mullins is that no one respects him. You can't have a quarterback like that. You need a quarterback who gets the flag when they get destroyed. So, Nick, you got to work on, yeah, I don't know, your sell job or – paying off the refs or whatever it takes. You need to get them to throw that flag because you're getting crushed. Crushed. You know what I'm saying? There's like a tier of quarterbacks who get the calls and a tier that don't. It's like a two, it's like a, a binary system in the NFL. No it took Cam Newton like seven years to get an unnecessary roughness penalty. And he's a True. running quarterback too. Yeah, it goes True. goes as it does. But remember before the Bills game, I was saying how Allen wasn't getting any unnecessary roughness penalties at all. He doesn't slide, so he doesn't get those. But he also wasn't getting a lot called in the first place. So maybe he finally hit that that marker that he needed to get in in stats halfway through the game. I don't know. Or or maybe it wasn't Allen so much as it was Street. Maybe Street's got a reputation. <laughs> he gets around a quarterback. Oh, you know, kid, kid. Because the thing about Street is he actually runs very fast. If you notice those situations where the quarterback's getting out there and, and Street like makes a beeline, he's really fast. And he must arrive with some uh, surprising force that the refs and the, and the quarterback are not expecting. The thing that I've noticed, I remember in training camp before we go, they would always do this thing where they'd practice uh, special teams and they would practice fielding like a pooch kick where the guy just kicks it to one of the up guys. The, one the, of the DeMarcus blocker. Dobbs drill. Yes. And it's all they once a day, they would kick the ball to Contavious Street and he would take off up the field. And I'd be like, man, that is the fastest 320 pound man I've ever seen. I, he must run a four seven. So, yeah, that guy can move. I'd like to see if he does it again today. Just don't. Just stop. I don't roll. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're probably going to get the 15 yard flag anyway. If you knock the quarterback out of the game, I guess it's worth it. No, don't do it. It's Alex Smith. We like Alex. I don't know what to tell you, Contavious. You're, you're in a tough spot. You're in a tough space. I don't know. Get a Pro Bowl and then they won't throw the flag, I guess.